Yes, you are. Are you going to say hi to everybody? Mm -hmm. Then it's time to disconnect the charger. Always disconnect the charger before you start working on an electric fence. Otherwise... Oh, hey there, Mission Control. Well, it is a gorgeous day out, um, but I'm a little in a, in a bad funk here. Uh, I woke up this morning just exhausted. I've been going so hard. And the first thing I see is uh, all of our horses out in our front yard uh, helping us uh, mow the yard, uh, if you will. And uh, that was... It was great and all that they were being so helpful, but then it turned into a giant roundup issue where they got outside the fence line and we were just running all over the place. I hadn't had my coffee yet, and that is just not a good way to start the day. So it's clear that today's priority is fencing. We need to get it fixed. Now he's, this is Bandit, and he's just being a lover dog today. I think he knows we're going to go out and do some fun stuff. But what I wanted to do in this video... Um, I don't think anyone wants to go follow me around uh, as I walk 20 acres of fence and fix it. But I wanted to go over some of the basics uh, for those that are getting into to homesteading or ranching or people considering it and maybe you're just, you're, you got your property and you're starting to think about what you want to do for fencing. First thing I want to tell you is never, ever, 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 ever use high tension steel fencing. It is a waste of time. It is a waste of money. Uh, it is a huge amount of labor uh, to maintain it. I bought it and did high tension steel because I, I thought it'd be better than barbed wire. It's safer. Um, it looks really, really nice. It is safer. It does look nice. But everything negative about it uh, is something you do not want to deal with. Get woven field fence. Skip barbed wire. Go to woven field fence. It is the most utilitarian field fence or fence that's available. And by utilitarian, I mean it. It, it has the most utility, uh, the most the most diverse set of animals. You can put any animal behind uh, woven field fence, and uh, you can put goats. You can put chickens. You can put pigs, horses, cows, goats. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, get field fence. In addition, it's way easier to maintain. One of the problems with high tension uh, field or t high tension wire fence like this is that it goes through thermal cycling. All of them go through thermal cycling, but when it's in high tension, what that means is when it gets hot, it expands. And then when it gets cold, it contracts. And these are very, very small contractions, but eventually the wires just snap um, or they sag at, through this uh, thing. So then you have to go tighten them some more. So in your toolbox, you need to have a fence tensioner tool. Uh, you could also use a 9 16 wrench, uh, which is basically what's on the back side here. Uh, but you need to have one of those. Um, this is my bucket. Um, I don't have a quad or a side-by-side. -side. And some of the places I have to go don't have uh, the space for a quad uh, to get in there. Uh, but I would love to have one that goes back in there because then you have your, all your tools on it. Um, but I carry this bucket with me when I do fence repair. Uh, the key tool you need is a fence tool. Um, this is a multi-purpose tool. Uh, make sure you get them that have red handles or orange, uh, really a bright, bright color. And the reason why you want that bright color, these ones have been out in the sun and I lost them, uh, but eventually I found them because of the red handle. Uh, the top of it's going to rust. They all, they all do. They all turn colors. But what you want is a really bright handle so that when you accidentally drop it on the ground, it falls out of your, bu out of your bucket or it falls out of your belt or it falls out of your pocket. Um, you can find it when you walk back through. But this tool right here, that's a must-have tool. Another tool is a crimper tool, which is another reason why I hate uh, high-tension uh, field fence, is because you have to use a crimper uh, to crimp uh, these little crimper guys here. Uh, this is how you crimp this wire back. So you'll fold, fold the wire back on itself. These go on, and then you use um, the crimping tool to crimp it. So you got to carry... Uh, when you have high tension wire, you've got to carry this, you've got to carry this, you've got to carry these, and you've got to carry this thing in order to maintain your fence. Uh, some other stuff that we have in here, here's more, more crimps. Um, after I put the high tension fence in and then we got cows, the older cows uh, respected the fence because they've been trained on different fence, like a field fence or like an electric fence. And we didn't have an electric fence when we first started. So when we had our first calf, the small calf um, figured out you can go right through the fence. <laughs> and ever since, all subsequent calves have figured that out. So we put up electric fence. An electric fence, um, 
that's the ping pong sound that you hear in the background as our charger and it charges a capacitor then it discharges sends out a very high voltage pulse through all of our fencing um, but you you want to put that fence line right where their nose is going to be so you have a horse's nose you have a cow's nose so we're kind of somewhere right in here you know oh well, yeah like right when they're eating it's down here and that's where their head is usually at your head is usually down so that when they bring their head up their nose hits that wire and pow it zaps them but when they're small they can go underneath of it uh, or if you put it down too low they can go over the top of it I've had both problems it's another reason why field fence woven field fence is just the way to go but uh, because we have uh, this high tension garbage fence <laughs> you can tell I do not like it uh, we have electric fence as well along the inside so essentially I'm maintaining two fence lines when I go out so you got to have some insulators um, and then we do use wood posts so you need to carry uh, some wood post staples. Now the nice thing is you don't need a hammer because this has a hammer on it for exactly that purpose. And then I carry uh, carry a bunch of extra electric fence here because that's the thing that gets broke the most. Um, whether it be a deer or whatever, uh, deer like to get tangled up in it. Uh, the cows, once, once a deer, usually what happens is a deer will come through and uh, they're going fast and they'll pop that wire. They, they just don't care. Um, it tends to keep them away. Once a deer, if you have a deer herd around, they learn that you have electric fence and then they will start to stay away. So it's very good. When we first moved in uh, and the fence was just up, we had deer coming all, all in here and eating our roses, eating everything. But over the course of years, the deer, they're kind of a local herd here and they know that we have electric fence <clears throat> and they're they stay away now we don't have deer coming into the yard really uh except for when the fence is down so yeah they'll come in and they'll uh they'll go through other sections of the fence back where it's treed where you can't see them they'll snap it a bear might walk through and snap it um, and then once one section is snapped then the cow figures out that it's down and the cow starts going through and the cow opens up a whole other set of problems and the horses go through the problems that the cow set up and it's just a, a cacophony of uh, humorous airs that lead me to do a lot more work. So if you are starting a ranch, a farm, a homestead, put woven field fence in. It will save you a tremendous amount of time. Trust me on that one. Uh, another thing you need when you're out fixing fence is a good hat. And uh, you'll notice this hat has gone through a lot. Uh, my neck is red right now because I've been out. We've just had two or three days of beautiful weather and uh, I've been wearing my baseball cap. You know, I went from my stocking cap to my baseball cap and now it's basically uh, warm out there. And this poor, you don't need to go spend a lot of money on a hat, by the way. This is like a $12 straw hat. And uh, you, you really don't want to spend more than that on your working hat. I, I, people who do, I, I think they're just kind of nutsoid. Uh, because this thing has lasted me eight years. This is an eight-year hat and you can see it gets worn I've jumped in the pool with this thing and that's why you get them wet and then they can form But one bad thing the only bad thing about these types of hats is that the hat band here it shrinks So as you get it wet with sweat And then you know, it'll it'll ex expand so like you see it on my head right now it, It's kind of high up on my head. It should be down should be, oh wow, should be down here. And that's really tight on my head. Uh, but as we go throughout the day, my sweat will get in there and it'll expand that band, but then when it dries out, it shrinks back down. So uh, maybe I could 3D print a hat holder for this thing so that it keeps it extended. That's a good idea. That is a great idea. I'm gonna do that. All right, so anyway, you want a good hat, some good sunscreen today. I'm going without sunscreen just cause why not? Uh, but for those that are really sensitive to the sun, you definitely want to have some sunscreen on or a long shirt. And I have the sweat wicking type of material on. These are my shirts, my undershirts for my ABUs when I was in uh, Baghdad, when I was in the Air Force. Um, they're really, really useful. Uh, but long sleeve cotton shirts are great. And what you want to do, if it's really hot out, you want to let those shirts get sweaty, honestly. Uh, and as soon as a cotton shirt gets sweaty, you cool down a lot. And uh, at first it may seem very, very uncomfortable. I know when I, 
first went to the desert, you know, getting, getting really sweaty, uh, it was counterintuitive. You're like, this is uncomfortable. But after about day two, you realize as soon as you get your sweat on, you start cooling down a lot. It's just evaporative cooling. It's our body's natural way to cool. So if you're out working fence, a good cotton shirt, or if you're throwing hay bales, especially, a long sleeve cotton shirt is the way to go. You definitely want one of those. Don't, don't do synthetics. Um, I've, I've done both and the cotton shirt is just always better, always. Uh, it gets wet, boom, and then you're, you can just go all day long. And uh, oh yeah, so we got our hat. The last thing we need is water. Uh, take some water out with you because when it gets hot and when you're out in there in the sun, you can go a lot longer if you're drinking water constantly. If you drink just a little bit of water throughout the day, you'll start getting tired, um, dizzy as you go up and down, all those types of things. You wanna have a lot of water with you. So those are the things, lessons learned uh, that I'm passing on to you guys. I have a tremendous amount of fencing to go fix today. So I hope you enjoyed this, you know, things you need video. Uh, I gotta go out there and start <laughs> Huffing or hoofing it and uh, getting all this fence prepared. So, um, thanks for following along. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Uh, don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And if you'd like to support us, you could do so through Patreon, uh, or we're considering the membership on YouTube. So, let us know what you think about membership. In the meantime, everyone, this is Real Martian. Out. <laughs>